Hey guys, welcome back to Mummy Cooks Homemade. This is the day in the life of the kitchen and it is Good Friday. Happy Easter to everybody. Hope you are all with your families. It's in the UK, an extended weekend. Friday through to Tuesday, a bank, it's bank holiday weekend. So this is the kids. I've not done breakfast, I have not had the time. The kids have chosen these noodles. They really like these noodles. No, they don't eat them more than once a week. But they like these noodles. Don't know why. Don't know what makes these ones different. But they really enjoy them. So, so long as we only have them. That's a soup base. So long as we only have them once a week. I don't see the problem with them having them, to be honest. And that's uh, flavouring oil. It's the tiniest little sachet. My hands are starting to dry out now, which is good. They're not raw anymore. Same time every year. It'll soon pass. Oh, nearly put two lots in one. So yeah, this is what the kids had for lunch. Hi guys, so Steve's been out with the kids. They wanted to spend some of the money that they saved up, but they didn't find anything really. So what he did bring back, I just thought I'd pop onto the day in the life. So over here, they went to Morrison's and they was told they could pick out a, an egg each. And that's from Nana's money. So they decided on this. And they've just twigged that these are all different flavours and not the same flavour. And these are £5 each. Eggs are so expensive now. I remember this size used to be about £3. So there's some Morris Pipers. Just some older. Yeah, this is Aldi, this bit, and some normal white potatoes. Today is Thursday, <clears throat> um, so it's the last minute day in the life. So this is vegetables for Sunday. Packet of tender stem and a extra large brussel, also known as a white cabbage. So I've been looking just for a small, turn it round, piece of uh, pork shoulder. That is shoulder, isn't it? Is it? I think so. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, because I wanted to make char suey, so I'll film that one for you. And that's what you got that for. And that was 1.57 kilos and it was 5.98. I wanted some cooking bacon, but they didn't have any, so he just fetched this back. Obviously, the kids like bunny crumpets. All crumpets are the same. Amy's not usually bothered about them, but because of in the shape of a bunny, she'll probably eat them. Um, 16 ounce steak. I'm going to make um, today's meal out of this, and it's not going to be a fried piece of steak. You'll see on the video anyway what I do with that. Two packs of biscuits. Um, therefore, one is today's video and one for the weekend. Caitlin spent... How much was it, Caitlin? Fire. And which shop, Steve? B&M. This is from B&M. She's just handed me this. She's the uh, Harry Potter freak. She just put it back in the box so I could show you. So this was £5 and she's done Hermione's. And... That's Caitlin? It, that's it. That's it. I've not done more. Have you not? I thought you had done Dumbledore. No. No. Okay. I can't find one anyway. So she bought that. Yeah, Caitlin, okay, you can take that. Right. I'm going to bang on about multivits. I buy multivits for the kids. And I usually buy them online. Tell me in the comments if anyone buys them for the kids and they've noticed the massive jump. It's three to four times dearer now than it used to be for the multivit gummies. I've tried buying the cheaper, chewable, powdered ones. The kids aren't having it. Steve got these from Aldi. The 60 in there. Gummies. £1.80 odd, was it, Steve? Something like that, wasn't it? Couldn't believe it. So he grabbed two of them. If I was there, I'd have probably grabbed more, but never mind. I could tell the kids are at home because Caitlin's just fetched that, so I could show that on the camera as well. That was the other one she painted. And that's Hermione. There you are, Caitlin. Take that back. Yeah. Right, so he also went to B&M 
and for Sunday's pudding I just needed one more of the small eggs um, so you'll see what I'm doing with them on the uh, Monday video two bottles of malt vinegar Steve can't survive in the house or the kids if they can't have vinegar on the chips essential essential is it god these feel empty don't they they're not two right guard because I told him he stinks so Good he's, for you. <laughs> so he's got to have them now soft bakes kids got these not long ago and demolished them Amy loved them as well so he grabbed a couple of them because they was quite cheap there grabbed a couple of dumpling mixes oh you don't want another stew we had one not long ago um Lloyd Grossman lasagna white sauce stop hinting um freezer bags medium sized and two of the bacon grill let's get back to the rest of the video so this is my lunch see somebody's been nibbling at my corned beef and I was not happy I'd have took a whole slice I wouldn't have just had a little bit but nobody is owning up to the theft of half a corned beef slice in this house how ridiculous now I grant that me Wittering about somebody nicking half a slice of my corned beef is ridiculous. But still, really? And it won't cut, so that means someone stuck the mitt in there. <laughs> no. So, yeah, that's my dinner. Quick dinner, get it over with. Now we're on to the Easter Rocky Road. I do have two recipes for Rocky Road already on the channel. I will link both below. One's a regular like this and one's a luxury one. To be honest, so long as you've got the basics three in there, which is your butter and um, your chocolate. Yeah, your basic three things in there. You can add what other bits you want in there, whatever you like. So I needed 250 grams of either Biscoff or whatever else I was going to put in there. I, don't, I know I didn't have 250 grams, so I used whatever was left and then topped it up to 250 grams with a caramel fluff. You can buy this um, quite easily here in the UK now. But if you do have trouble, I think home bargains do it. Don't quote me on that. I think they do. I'm sure I've seen it there. But I know uh, Amazon does it as well. So like I say, I topped it up to 250 with the fluff. And it's l literally melted down marshmallows. It makes it so sticky. and oh. So this chocolate, as I was sorting it out, seized. Please don't throw away chocolate that's seized. I don't, let me know down below how many of you have chucked away chocolate that have seized. Really? This, I swear, had seized up. And the last time I made it, it seized up. Because I don't take any notice when I put it in the microwave, to be honest. Um, but if it seizes, your chocolate at any time, whatever you're making, boil a kettle. And then add little bits, I would say a couple of tablespoons at a time, of boiling water into that chocolate. And mix it until it's all mixed in. And keep going until you bring it back to what you see in that dish. And that is all that I do. I never ever pay attention when the chocolate goes in so the reason I don't worry is because I know that can bring the chocolate back and that I swear is literally all I did to bring that chocolate back there we go look at that you would not have thought that was seized two minutes before I started doing that thick creamy and unctuous so I'm just doing a sort of Easter version of Rocky Road for the kids I say for the kids Steve loves Rocky Road but because he finds it sickly he can only eat little bits at a time I don't have that problem with 
um, chocolate stuff, to be honest. I don't find stuff like that sickly. I am doing a separate pudding for Easter Sunday. Which I will record and it'll go up on Monday's Meals of the Week. With all my Easter Sunday prep. So what I'm going to do is decorate this with um, the last bit of Easter stuff that I've got. So some chocolate galaxy eggs. Covered in gold. Nothing like, like a bit of bling. And some bashed up Easter egg. Poke that in. You do whatever you like. Put what you want on there. But this, as I say, is just a bit of fun for the kids for Good Friday. What's everybody eating today? Let me know down in the comments. We have shrimp today. Fish is typical for Good Friday. I know a lot I've already spoke to have said they're having fish in one form or another. And if you have said for Sunday, either lamb or gammon. I'm on the gammon side. We don't eat lamb here. Not for any reason, just that we don't like it. I find lamb is a very strong taste and it's the only meat I found that when it's cold is disgusting. <laughs> so you can't even save it unless you like to eat it cold, obviously. I mean, not everybody's as fussy as me, but yeah, even Steve don't like it cold. I don't think mother-in-law does either. So that just needed a little bit more time to set up. Overnight would have been better. You can see by the bottom look, it looks fudgy. But needed a shot for the video. So what can I say? The things we do for you guys. <laughs> so this is crispy chilli beef. This is what we had for tea. Now, this was the first time I've made it. So I was winging it a bit. I had, I've got some, do you remember I got that Aldi bag? And I got some chilies reduced. Well, I froze them. So I did add, I've got two pair of legs next to me, look. That looks like, who's that? Caitlin. Oh no, them little toes. I don't think it is Caitlin. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? I forgot what I'm blooming saying now. Oh yeah, I froze the chilies and I chopped up straight from the freezer one chilli into this. And there was not very much heat at all. And that's saying something if it's coming from me, trust me. Um, so I think next time I make this, I would drop a tablespoon of sugar, which you'll see in a minute why. It wasn't overly sweet, wasn't too sweet. I'm just thinking that the amount of sugar counteracted the spiciness. And I will probably add an extra chilli. And that's coming from someone who can't stand spiciness so anyway i chopped up after all that waffling some portobello mushrooms and i thinly sliced one onion what you want is some very thin slices of beef luckily my knife look at that <laughs> my knife is the bee's knees And this beef is so, so soft. So this is the Big Daddy steak from Aldi. I did, you see them pieces that are coming off now. I did go back, lay them flat and then cut them lengthways. So I got two thin strips out of those. Because you only want to cook this for a few minutes. So I used a Big Daddy steak from Aldi. I think it was about five pound. But you get enough to feed four to five, four, not 45, four to five people. So, yeah. I have a lovely Easter card there. That is from my very good friend, Fiona. Over at Fiona in her kitchen. So thank you very much for that, Fiona. And for the lovely books and chocolates for the kids. So we had one egg in there and now we're going to put in four tablespoons of corn flour. 
this is just to give it a little bit of a crispy coating on the outside so you want a quarter teaspoon of black pepper quarter teaspoon of salt get all a good mix you want like a sticky coating on all the beef so make sure you get in there I also received a, a lovely card and a box from another friend Craigie Dunks so I want to say thank you very much to him as well your card along with Fiona's is up on the shelf I appreciate it very much So, for the sauce, there was six tablespoons of caster sugar, two of rice wine vinegar, three of soy sauce, and I think it was two or three, I can't remember, I'll have to watch, two of the tomato puree. So on tomato ketchup, two of the tomato ketchup, this is sweet chilli sauce, one, two, and that was it for the sauce, as easy as that, all that was ready left to the side until I'd sorted what else I needed to sort once you've fried the beef it literally comes together in about four minutes so snipping a chilli there was no heat from this maybe because I froze them didn't even deseed it look I don't know so I'm using garlic oil. It looks as though I'm going to use loads, but not a lot comes out of um, that bottle at once. So fry your meat in two batches and only stir it once or twice because you want to develop a crust on it. I think next time I would cook this and then crisp the outside more because I had trouble crisping mine. I don't know if it's because of the pan or not. Um so i think i would crisp it briefly in the air fryer i don't know but i'll definitely be making it again and to make things even easier i just used microwave rice and it was a very very nice meal it's a good way to good and cost effective way for a fake away i suppose if he's having a couple of friends over, this would do for adults, no, absolutely no problem. So I've left it to crisp up a little bit. So I'm just trying to sort of turn it over a little bit. And this cut, this Big Daddy steak was perfect because it was so tender. Normally you get these thin cuts of beef, don't you? And you, you cook them for a few minutes and they can be quite chewy. There was no chew to this. None. It was so tender. You could have gummed it to death. <laughs> so I put some more oil in because I want that crisp on it. Like I always say, leave all that on the bottom. That's going to come up with the drop of water that I put in. So take the first batch out. Keep the same heat on the pan. Don't worry about the bits on the bottom of the pan. Put a, drop more oil in. And what's left of your meat, get that in. You can see how thin these pieces are. So it's literally the work of the entire thing. Both batches together should take no more than five or six minutes. It's a very quick, quick job. 
I mean, while the meat was cooking, I my sink's right next to the oven, so I just leaned over the sink, just washing up. Not that you needed that graphic, but there you go. <laughs> so I'm trying not to move them too much. So I've got a crispy edge on it, look. You see some of them are not fully cooked, but that's not going to matter because it's going to go back in the pan again, into the sauce, so. So, to this pan I've added a drop more oil, garlic oil, and I've added some garlic and some thin sliced onions. Here come the mushrooms. And I'm going to add one to two tablespoons of water in a minute. And that deglazes the bottom of the pan. Because you're not going to cook these for long. Two or three minutes. There you go, see? drops a bit in it starts to go at the bottom look and now I can scrape up the bits from the bottom using a plastic tool if you're using a decent pan don't want to ruin it so all this that's coming up will go onto it'll stick onto the onions and the mushrooms you can see it's sticking on there now and it'll go into the sauce and adding that touch of liquid in there really gets it to cook a little bit faster that's all flavor I always say that this was really nice if you like spicy I would advise adding maybe some chip a teaspoon of chili flakes in because this as I made it wasn't spicy and it was supposed to be spicy chili beef it was as far as i'm concerned it wasn't spicy anyway so as you can see look that drop of water has helped cook them down quite fast and bring up all that flavor from the bottom of the pan so the sauce for this is already pre-made we did it earlier So now comes the sauce. I would say the mushrooms and onions are half cooked, just the way I like them. I've added that sauce in. Now we're really getting that them scrapings off the bottom there, look. Ooh, look at the color that sauce has turned. Oh, I could just eat that again back in with that beef and in a sec I just turn the heat off I've literally just got to heat up the rice and that is it. It's as easy as that. Yeah, turn the heat off. Don't know how long it was in there not very long at all well, that's it it's finished the veggies have still got a bit of bite left to, to them if you wanted to chuck in some peppers you could do that some green beans maybe 
but this is the original unmessed with recipe. And there we go. Crispy chili beef. Num num num. And Steve had his with spicy rice. Spicy Mexican rice. The last thing for the day. So I'd already prepared the Rocky Road for today, which is Good Friday, which I'm voicing this over on. So it's going straight from voiceover to check to <laughs> online. We, none of us like hot cross buns, so I've done tea cakes for breakfast for us. I also have tea cakes in the playlist. I can link up below for you. If you haven't made them before, super easy. You don't don't worry about when if you can't roll them into bowls and that I can't either. But they turn out all right in the end. I added flame raisins this time. Honestly, I'm not bothered what goes into them, which sultanas, raisins, whatever. I was actually a bit worried. I thought there was something wrong with this yeast. <laughs> it's new yeast as well. It's a new packet that I poured in there. It didn't really uh, bubble up, but I chucked it in anyway. But as you can see, it was absolutely hunky-dory. Put it on the dough cycle and left it alone. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm just going to leave it now. Out of the bread machine in a bowl and cover it for half an hour. And that's been done it's been left for its second rise now i'm gonna <laughs> yeah caitlin's in the kitchen again i've just spotted a leg it's usually the dog now i'm gonna split this dough it's a... i attempted equal parts i could get the scale out and weigh in but yeah it's just not that serious <laughs> Can't roll for toffee. <laughs> oh dear. I watch like Azerbaijani women rolling dough, dough balls and they don't even think about it. You know, it's it's a job that they've done in it for years and years and years, I suppose. Once you've practiced all that time, it's second nature. But no, like pastry, dough hates me. <laughs> but... They turned out, and we've had them this morning. There's literally two left. It was absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. Not really fussed, to be honest. <laughs> As you can see, I gave up on uh, beauty and aesthetics and just went for get it done <laughs> and get it in the oven. <laughs> so I brushed these with um, egg yolk. It did give it a darker look once it come out of the oven. It is not burned, I can assure you. It just gave it a really dark look when it come out of the oven. I did do some smaller ones on purpose because Amy's all, I want one of them, want one of them, and then don't eat it. So yeah, that's why. So 
Then we're going to cover these, allow them 20 minutes to double in size. I'm going to cook them for between. See, the egg yolk makes it look as though it's burnt, and it's not. It's definitely not. So fluffy. I've cooked them between 25 and 30 minutes. There you go, look. Beautiful. Don't be put off by that egg yolk on top. Steve thought I put a syrup on. I was like, why would I put a syrup on him? <laughs> so yeah, good, happy Good Friday to everybody. I hope you have a great weekend with the family. And I will see you again soon. Bye.